All right. Thanks, everybody. You had a good weekend. All right, so let's just take a look at uh, SPY here real quick. I think it's going to go lower this week, and I will tell you why, right? If we look at the S&P 500, we just go look at the SPY fact sheet. Um, I mean, I think actually this is going to be a pretty well. Sometimes the margin is hard to read. Sometimes it's easy to read. I think this is one of those easy to read times. You know, odds, it's not a guarantee. But anyway, you know, different sectors are in the driver's seat at different times. And it's pretty simple what's going on here. All right. So tech is the biggest sector. It's like 31%. Financials and healthcare together are like, I don't know, 26%. All right. So if we look at tech, this is an ETF that tracks the tech sector. You know, it's kind of been trending down. If we look at financials, they've been going up. Remember, the S&P is the sum of its parts. So a big part of the S&P is going down. The number one part is going down. But the number two and the three parts are going up. But here's why I think there's a good chance we get a reversal. Because number two and three, healthcare and financials, are really overbought. The money that's coming into tech is, is or coming out of tech is going over here. So I think, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or well, actually today is uh, Monday, but Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, I mean, let me just put this in perspective before I leave. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it again, right? It's like, the market is the sum of its parts. The S&P has kind of been going up slowly, not because of tech, because tech has been weak, but healthcare and financials have been kind of pulling it up higher. But they're really overbought. It's like a rubber band, right? Like the healthcare, I mean, sorry, the uh, tech rubber band is like kind of not doing much. But the healthcare rubber band and the financial rubber band are really stretched out. So if they come in, and my suspicion is they will, that's going to push SPY lower. So if you're a SPY trader, I mean, you know, I, I trade the different sectors and everything, but uh, if I was just a SPY trader, if I was a swing trader, I'd get really interested, you know, 554 or so. You know, we had our gap, we have our gap down, we have our gap up, we could refill the gap on the way down. Um, you know, shorter term traders, like if you're a day trader, I don't know, just kind of looking in here. Let me just see here, right? I'd be like right there, 558.20. That was the close there, that was closer. Most volume trades on the open and the close. So if we go lower, there's a good chance there's going to be some support here. It, from a very short-term point of view, it almost, it could even be like an hour or a two-hour thing over the course of the day. If we break there, next level is down here. Five, we're just going to call it 555 to make it easy, right? Resistance here, support here. If we break that, and I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but I would not be surprised Thursday, Friday. Then, you know, from a swing trading point of view, I think there's a good, you know, good trade here. I think we could break the support, refill these gaps. You know, it's one of the things I always talk about, and you should check in uh, to our morning call if you want to learn why. Things that move quickly through one level and spend, or through some levels and then some sp spend some time trading and then reverse and go back through those same levels in the opposite direction tend to move quickly. And the same thing... Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of a visual presentation here. The same thing could be about to happen again if we break this level. Remember, no one really knows where the hell the market is going, all right? It's one of the things I've learned. You know, some people get lucky, you know, and they get a good call now and then, and they can live on it for a long time. But no one really knows where the hell it's going other than the market. So that's why here at Stock Market Jobber, we don't take really big opinions. We let the market tell us what to do. If the market, if the S&P breaks through this support, I mean, sorry, resistance, and I don't think it's going to happen, but if the market tells me it is, then I'm going to go along with it. But, and if we start going down and we break those 
other support levels I talked about, there's a good chance we move lever. You see, I'm not making an opinion. I'm not taking a stand. I mean, it's fun to be like, oh, I, the market's going to do this. The market's going to do that. But the best traders, if we're in this, you know, time frame of shorter term traders or uh, swing traders, you got to be a reactionary. You got to play defense. And by playing defense, you can play offense. All right. My defense is here's my support. If it breaks, I'm going on offense. You're letting the market tell you what to do. And obviously, the mayor uh, idea is true as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope that helps. I'll see you.